Alright, so we're going to take a look at these motors today and see uh, if everything's okay with this motor. Just for comparison, this here is a modern uh, one-horse, three-phase motor. Ubiquitous motor, you see it everywhere. You see it on lathes, you see it on exhaust fans. Pretty standard, bog standard, 56 frame motor. This sucker here is a 1941 one-horse, three-phase motor. Hell of a difference there. Now, it's partially from manufacturing techniques have gotten better over the years, and it's also partially because when they say one horse, they ain't lying. This sucker will probably put out one horse, you know, the best of circumstances, most ideal, everything, max horsepower is one horsepower. This sucker will probably put out one horsepower when you're freaking dragging this thing down. So, um, you can see just the beefiness of it. And even what's kind of funny is you can see most of the bulk, besides the big ass cast iron case, um, most of the bulk is going to be the actual field windings and not necessarily the rotor. And we'll, we'll take them both apart. Well, this one's already taken apart, but we'll, we got to get into this because they're the bearings are a little bit, they're a little noisy and there's a slight, slight, slight amount of play in the shaft. Basically, what I want to do right now is make sure that this is electrically sound. Um, before we get into this and have to replace, you know, get into replacing bearings and things like that. So, any motor that you get of unknown origin, I don't care if it's 115 volt, 208 volt, 460 volt, 600 volt, I don't care what it is. If you don't know the motor, you don't know where it came from, and you don't know its service life, before you even plug it into anything, you want to electrically make sure it's sound. So, this is a three phase motor. I have three wires here. Now all this wiring will be replaced. I'm not worried about that right now. This is just a test run. We want to make sure that we do not have a direct short from any of these leads to the case or any winding to the case. And we also want to make sure that our windings are still intact. So this is already wired for it's a dual voltage motor um, 460 or uh, 208. It is wired for 208 and that means that the uh, windings are in um, parallel as opposed to series. All right, so uh, four, four, five, and six are together. Um, one and seven are two aligned. Two and eight are two aligned, and three and nine are two aligned. Okay, so that's these guys here. So get any kind of uh, <clears throat> you know continuity test a meter, whatever you got. Uh, even any kind of meter is actually really good to have around the house. You can get the cheapos from. Um, from Home Depot or something like that to use as a continuity tester and just general voltage checker around the house. They work really, they work really well. Something to have. Um, this is the one I use at work. It's a field piece stick meter. It's kind of geared towards the HVAC trade. Um, I love this meter. It's my favorite one that I've uh, that I've used and I've used Fluke and I've used them all. And I like this one a lot because it has a lot of uh, accessories that clip in here. But your bog standard continuity tester is all you're going to need because you're just going to want to make sure that something's not direct shorted. So. We'll set this, set that over there. Okay, we got it on the BB. Uh, I'm gonna pick a spot on the case here. This tag should actually be grounded fairly well to the case, so it is. So we wanna go wire by wire here. Okay, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And that's a good sign. So we're not direct shorted. We're not grounded to the case. Now we want to see and make sure that we have continuity between each one of these legs. So just pick a leg and go to the next. Okay, we got it there. Go to the next and then switch. And grab the other one. All right. So we have continuity between all of the legs. So we can be fairly sure, certain that when we hook this into... Our VFD here that we're not going to blow anything up uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the motor is going to run but we're sure that we're not going to have the big sparky sparks and blow out a VFD so um, I'm going to hook this into the VFD right now and disconnect it from the mill and we'll see if this sucker runs okay so we're all hooked into our VFD now before I get going with the VFD here and we start this up there's one small caveat about using 
older motors with a VFD. Also, the other thing you have to realize though is even though you have the variable speed, you wanna be careful with that. You don't wanna run this motor at slow speed for very long. Reason being is because the cooling fan is, a, is attached to the shaft. So this motor has to spin to cool these windings. It's designed to spin at 17, is this 1725 RPM? I'm pretty sure is what this is. Yeah, 1725 RPM. It's designed for that specific RPM to cool off the windings. You slow it down, it's not gonna get as much air across the windings, you can overheat the motor. One way around that is to take computer cooling fans and put them right in the back and use that as a cooling fan and negates this having to spin up as fast. But it's just a few things to be aware of. I'm not saying that you can't do it. Um, it's just some things to be aware of, okay? So let's kick this sucker on. Starting up the VFD there. The turner, turn it up to uh, 60 hertz here. And we're just gonna, okay. That was just one little jog, so now we'll let her spin up. Okay. So she runs and it actually moves a ton of air. There is some bearing noise in there that you can hear. You can hear that bearing noise, but that's uh, she definitely runs. So we're gonna have to take this apart, take a look at those bearings, see how they replace them. Also want to clean up, there's a ton of sawdust and what not in there, all that's gotta get cleaned out. And all these wires, at least the wires going through this piece of armored cable here, all that needs to be replaced, but we do have a working motor. Okay, so I'm gonna take the motor apart here. I got the pulley off already, I disconnected the electrical and cut that off, get it out of the way. Now the key, the keyway that was in here, or, or the key itself actually rather, um, was a wedged key, so it was cut uh, at a slight taper. And when you put the pulley on, you tap that key into place, and that's what holds the pulley on. There's no, no set screw in the pulley. Um, what I want to do first, before I even start taking this apart here, I want to make some indexing marks on this outside bell housing and then the body of the motor. Uh, so that way there we know how to put it back and where things should line up. Also, there's two bolts here. They probably hold some sort of bearing retaining plate on the inside. I don't know if I have to take those off first. If I can get this housing off with those in place, we'll figure that out. So right now, I'm just marking, unlike most motors, smaller motors that have one long bolt that goes straight through the body of the motor with a head on one end and a nut on the other end, this actually has a bolt in from this side and a bolt in from this side. So it's a little bit different, but basically the same. So I'm just making a punch mark here then a punch mark on the body and same here okay so we can line those up so let's see if we can do this front off first now almost I don't want to say almost all but most of the older equipment that I've taken apart lathes, the drill press, um, table saws, the motors, or most of the bearings inside of them have been new departure extended race bearings. So I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark as to that's what we're going to see in here and we'll see how right I am. It's like everything else, uh, just a little bit longer than you think.
Alrighty, I'm gonna grab my brass hammer. There it is. Oh yeah, look at So The shaft's gonna have to be driven out We can look at this side here and there is a bearing in there. There's definitely a bearing in there. Here's a bearing housing. You can see years of uh, yumminess in there. Look at it. That's about. That's how hot that grease is. So actually. What it looks like to me is there are four flathead screws here. If I take those out, this whole bearing housing will, will come right out. Is that's what it looks like to me. Or no, it's just a shield will come out. Just a shield will come out. So this, yeah, this, this, there's a bearing down in there. Um, so that's going to have to come out this here and it's pinned it's pinned what are those screws those are screws those aren't pins there's what looks to me like a screw in here and a screw in here but they're in through the other they're in through the back side here they're in uh, this away I don't understand how that works, but anyway, let me get this. Let me get the uh, rotor out of here, and we can look at both housings. And actually, there are there's a piece of metal. There's a bunch of chips. There's some acorns in here. 
squirrelies. All right, so I'm gonna take this uh, coil here, this stator, and we'll go put it someplace safe. And we'll take a look at this later. But everything looks okay. There's nothing. You can see the insulation looks good here. I mean, I don't see any shiny spots or anything. Um, just a lot of okies that need to be blown out. So we'll put this in a safe spot. Okay, so we got everything out here. And uh, this came out in a little bit of a different way. So this bearing cup here, this bearing housing is its own separate piece. Okay, and you can see the flange on the inside there. That's what these bolts attach to. But to get this flange off, there are two screws that are here. One here and one here that are screwed in from the opposite face. So this whole bearing cup's got to come out. Like so. Now when it goes back in, there are two little notches here. Two little cutouts that need to be in line with those bolt holes on the housing. And you can see there's two flathead screws with washers. And those washers are clamped against a ridge. and then they separate. So there's the bearing in there and actually all this is here. That's dried grease because there were grease zerks on the outside of this which actually have to come off first before you take this out. So these are the two bearing cups. The bearing's still on this shaft here. So, yeah, look at it. They don't, they don't sound too bad here, but I mean, I can, I can wiggle them. There is some, there is play in there. So yeah, so we're not worried about doing any kind of damage to them. I can just use a pulley puller to get the suckers right off. And we'll clean it up and see what the numbers are. Okay, there she is. 
And look at that. Extended in a race. Okay, I just cleaned up my hands and actually put on some gloves here. So I got it cleaned up. I don't know if you can read that, but it says WIR 305W. So these are the wide inner ring bearings, usually found transmissions, things like that. And you can see what happened with this is that inner cage isn't moving. It, well, it is now, but it wasn't a second ago. I just moved it with my hand, my finger. But you can see it's getting stuck in some places there, right there. It's not moving. Now, if I move it with my finger a little bit, I can get it to move, and then it'll stick. So it wore probably a flat on the balls. That's why I'm getting a little bit of a wiggle. I'm definitely getting a wiggle in this. So these are toast. I'm going to search for these. I have a sneaking suspicion they're not going to be the cheapest in the world. Um, my guess is probably 40 to $50 a bearing. So because um, I've dealt with something very similar to this before not in a machine but in, in something else so um, I'm going to track these down see if I can find something to fit and uh, we'll go from there okay so we're ready to get this motor back together again and I painted it up nice um, I masked off the plates masked off the uh, wires here scrubbed everything down um, this I sanded down a little bit. I didn't strip this. I don't want to use any kind of cleaners or anything near these windings. Um, and rattle canned it. I used just a paper towel to mask the uh, windings off. The windings themselves I clean with a stiff bristle brush. The actual metal plates inside uh, I clean with just a uh, some Windex and a, um, a green scotch Bright pad just to get the goop off of there. Um, I didn't want to use any kind of solvents or anything. That may damage any of this insulation. Uh, we cleaned up the shaft here and I just wanted to show you one thing on the shaft. So this rotor here, you can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's keyed and on and then what they did is they actually welded it, welded it to the key and to the shaft which actually warped this a little bit. Now it was that way from day one, you can see the, here are the two weights to uh, counterbalance that. So when I spun this in the lathe to clean it, it had a little bit of a wobble to it, but you know that was from day one and I, I don't see any evidence of it actually hitting anything in here, so we're fine with that. And clean this all nice and up with solvent. Now the bearings, which I already have one packed right here, um, I was able to get track down from my supplier uh, Action Bearing over in uh, Brookline. And they actually had uh, eight of these in stock. So the old ones are somewhere around here. Yeah, right here. WIR 305S. The new ones are WIR 3. I'm sorry. The old ones are WIR 305W. The new ones are 305S. And the only difference between them is, is the ones that I picked up have one less ball than the ones I took out. But that doesn't really make that much of a difference because it's only rotational load. But these ones here are kind of noisy, a little clicky, um, and they also have a decent amount of play between the inner and outer races. These new ones, nice and smooth, um, $50 a bearing. They actually had eight of these in stock. Granted, it's not the cheapest in the world, but then again, it's a lot cheaper than buying a new motor. And this is probably a little bit more robust than a newer motor. Um, so I'd rather go with this big honking guy than a new one, to be honest with you. So basically we have these bearing caps here bearing retainers. Um, we're going to press these bearings onto the shaft and then slip these bearing retainers over. Or actually these have to go on first and these clamp here and there's a screw that screws down here with a washer that grabs that flange. Now if you notice, I don't know if the light can catch it correctly, but there's a little half moon cut out there. You just have to make sure that that, when I put it in, is in line <clears throat> with these two bolt holes here so that we can get the, the bolts in to retain this. And then we should be pretty much good to go. Put the grease zerks back in and we're all set. The one with the numbers on it goes to the rear. The other one obviously goes to the front. 
and we had already marked our bell housings so we know which side goes on there and I had already put this little baffle in. So what I'm going to do right now is just pack this other bearing and we can press that on the shaft. Um, they're a tight fit on the shaft and a nice slip fit. They're snug um, but they're a nice fit. Now they're calling me a liar. <laughs> if you get this in there you know at the correct angle of the dangle here which apparently I can't seem to do <laughs> so if you get this in right there it is they're a nice snug fit in there alright so they just have to you just have to line it up 100% correct and they're a press fit on the shaft and both bearing pockets, bearing retainers, are pretty much the same. If you get it in there nice, it'll go right in. Alright, so let me uh, get some grease in this one. And uh, we'll press them on the shaft. Okay, get the bearings pressed on both ends. And uh, they're actually packed with some grease. We'll put the grease zerks on there and give it a couple of squirts once we get it done. You want to be sure you put this end of the bearing housing back on there or otherwise you're in for a bad day. Um, these little cutouts here on the caps, those line up with these two outside holes here. So what we want to do is, when we put this on, is we want to line those up this here and then it's a screw with two washers that gets put on here and grabs the lip that's on this little housing. Get a little snug so I can still twist it, lining up those holes. And we'll take the other two. Okay, make sure those are nice and tight. Okay, so now we can get this back in. So let me set up a better camera angle. Okay, so I just have the rear housing bolted on here uh, very loosely. Now I have the punch marks that we had before lined up at the right slot. We still got some wiggle room, plenty of room to get this in. I just need something to be able to support this shaft as I put it through as gently as I can.
tank. And then the front, I'm going to look for my punch mark, which is right here. And my punch mark's right there. Okay, we're tight and the shaft rotates perfectly. We're not hitting anything at all. Our fans in the shroud nicely. No noise. All right, I'm just gonna screw in the electrical plate on the side here, the uh, electrical cover rather. And we can kind of hook it up to the VFD. Uh, I'll double check it again, make sure that I don't, it's not internally shorted from me fussing with it. We'll hook it up and see if there's any difference in the noise. Okay, so we got a temporary hooked up to the VFD. I just put a blue line on there so you can tell if it's uh, turning or not. I'm just going to give it a quick little bump. Okay, no problems there. We're going to let it run. Oh, yeah. Smooth and quiet. That's what I like. So while she's running, a couple of pumps of grease in there. Okay, we're gonna go reverse. It's got a little bit of noise actually, a little bit little chunk of schmutz just fell off one of the rotors inside. Um, so I'll get that off, but otherwise, She's nice and quiet. Let those uh, those bearings kind of get settled in there, and then we'll go around again and make sure everything, all the housings are nice and tight. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy.